Thank you, Susie. Um, I just want to reference that walk tomorrow that will be uh, happening on the east side over here. Um, there are a bunch of walkers from uh, a few churches, St. Joan um, of Arc, from St. Lucie's, and uh, St. Paul's on the Lake. Star of the and, uh, Sea. Star of the Sea. Sorry. <laughs> and um, they're going to converge. They're going to start at 1 o'clock and converge uh, shortly thereafter, let's say 2 o'clock, at the park for a picnic. So um, if you'd like to join us, please do. You can find more, I believe, on the back of the program is uh, the Pregnancy Aids uh, website. And finally, please welcome Dr. Levon Yule. He hosts the Saturday morning program Joshua's Trail on 1400 DTK and is the pastor of Bible Church in Ypsilanti. We give honor to our God and to our Savior, to magnify the blessed and wonderful name of our precious Holy Spirit that it dwells all believers. We give honor to all the clergy persons who are gathered and to all of you who are here on this most solemn occasion. Uh, this is always a time of mixed emotions when we are gathered together. We most certainly are comforted in the presence of believers who share like beliefs, but it's also a sad moment when we think of the thing that has drawn us here or the happening or occasion that has brought us to this place. I most certainly, every time I gather, I'm reminded of this great tragedy, and then it's compounded in my heart because I begin to think that when you think of this horrific time of slaughter of our unborn, that in my community there is a disproportionate number of abortions and the slaughtering of innocent life perpetually and continually for over 40 years. In the black community, the statistic says one-third to two-thirds of all babies are destroyed in the womb. And that means that uh, <clears throat> a population that has been numbered at being approximately uh, 14 or 13 percent of the population has 34 percent of uh, the abortion. So I most certainly applaud each one who has dedicated themselves to speaking out uh, in reference to this horrific and terrible monster that uh, roams among each of us and in our nation. <clears throat> so as we come today, I'm going to uh, share a word out of the word of the Lord from the book of Ephesians. How do I feel about this day? Well, I um, think that uh, the writer uh, has provided this verse of scripture for me just to expound on for, for a few moments from the book of Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 11 and 12. We pray God's blessing on the reading and the hearing of his word. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, <clears throat> excuse me, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. The 11th verse again, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but reprove them. And you know, quite often when we're getting ready to share a word from the Lord, we give a theme, and I'm going to give this theme for this reading. It's our mandate. It's our mandate. Mr. Webster tells us that the word mandate is a command or authorization to act in a particular way on a public issue given by the electorate to their representatives. There's another definition also given in Mr. Webster that says a mandate is an authoritative order or command, a royal mandate. In other words, we're not speaking of a choice, we're speaking of a mandate. And when I read this 11th verse here in the 5th chapter of Ephesians, I'm not reading a suggestion. Uh, I'm, I'm certain that some of you have come to realize that there are many believers who approach the Bible as though this is a book that's filled with great stories and a lot of suggestions that uh, 
might merit my giving some attention to when I get time and maybe I can straighten out God. Nice suggestion. But we're not dealing with a book of suggestions. We're dealing with a book that has mandates in it. Uh, this is not a suggestion to the church of Ephesus to respond in a certain way to situations going on contrary to what God would have in the life of believers and the world around them. But this was a mandate. This was a commandment that the people of God have to speak to an issue or issues that are contrary to the principles that God has laid down in his holy word. As I stand with each one of us today, I'm reminded that we as Christians, we are not dealing with a suggestion, but we're dealing with a mandate from Almighty God that we speak up and speak out in reference to situations that are contrary to the will and the way of God. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. And listen, that is a powerful word. When you look up that word reprove, we're talking about expose. We're talking about if necessary to rebuke. We're talking about taking an attitude where you are not trying to be necessarily a peacemaker but you are trying to be an individual that's standing strongly for something that you see that is contrary to the will and the way of God and even to mankind and as we come in these moments of remembrance to think about and remember the millions of babies who have died in this nation and especially those whose bodies have been discarded. I, I would like to remind all of us, it's wonderful that we are here, but we leave here with a mandate. God saying, it's, it's not a suggestion, it is a mandate that each one of us boldly stand and declare our side of the issue. I don't know uh, if all of you are where I am, but I have a bunch of kids and grandkids, and you know, sometimes we have to deal with these products of this godless academic uh, situation here we call an education in America, and they want to come home and reason with you and tell you why you're wrong and why they are right. And sometimes I notice that some of us with hoary heads here and we feel somewhat reluctant to speak to the issue boldly and you say, oh, I don't want to upset the grandkids and, and he just graduated from Harvard to Yale and I, 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 don't want to, I, don't want to, I don't want no upsetting of anyone at, at the family dinner at Thanksgiving time. But we have a mandate today to speak boldly and to speak succinctly and to speak unapologetically to the fact that until America responds to the death of 57 plus million babies until we begin to realize as a nation that we're on a path only that will lead to our destruction. God has mandated that not only you, but myself also, we have to be the reprovers. We have to make folks uncomfortable. Sometimes as I was a about to say, and I'll take my seat, is that, uh, you know, I have a few of those folks that come home and, Dad, you're not smart anymore. I, I just got this piece of paper, and you don't understand about abortion. And sometimes we as adults in the hurry head don't want to upset folks. But the mandate to us from God is that, yes, you must speak up. We must keep declaring the truth that this death must be eradicated from our land. We have a mandate not to hide behind a wall of silence or, nor to retreat behind I want peace. Because in war, peace is usually not there when the bombs are dropping and when the guns are, are blazing. But it's a time to know that if I don't fight now, there might not be a tomorrow. So as, as we leave this place, may you leave with this fire burning in your soul that I have a mandate to continue to cry out and tell America family and friends we cannot long exist as long as death reigns in our community and sometimes you cannot say it quietly you have to cry loud and spare not lift up our voices like a trumpet as the writer in Isaiah said and tell God's people of their sin so pre-aventure God will have mercy on us and cause this death to cease in the land God bless you Thank <laughs> you.